Rockstar Repair Addendum Writing. Hey guys, in this web uh, video tutorial, we're gonna go over uh, repair addendum writing and some of the best practices uh, and procedures and how to do that to best protect uh, your client's interests and keep the transaction moving smoothly. Client satisfaction hinges on many facets of the transaction. A customer satisfaction gap can be created when requesting repairs after the building inspection. Okay, so this slide is relatively easy. Um, it's basically the concept of that your clients have an idea of how they want something to look and to be um, that they're purchasing and you basically don't have an idea of what that is or you have an idea, um, but you wanna make sure that in the communication for the repairs on you know what the client expects and what they want the finished product to be that there isn't a breakdown there because when there is a breakdown then there's a satisfaction gap and then you've got an unhappy client and that's ultimately not what you know you want happening at the very end of the transaction when it's getting time to close and things aren't the right way then everybody's got to scramble client satisfaction hinges on many facets of the transaction a customer satisfaction gap can be created when requesting repairs after the building inspection Clients' expectations of how they want things are different than sellers or even yours. Take time to communicate with the client as to their specific needs. Putting those expectations in a proper legal contractual repair addendum is a skill that is easily honed. So again, just like the last slide, this one's pretty easy. Um, you really just want to communicate with ultimately what they expect the end result to be. Um, you don't want to be guessing at things and you don't want to just be throwing darts against the dartboard because it's just never going to work out. Um, communicating uh, the end result into a repair denim, pretty easy thing to do really, um, but it also can be easily messed up. Um, we're going to go over those quick little three things that I like to uh, stick to um, when doing it, and we'll go over them in these uh, next couple slides. Proper repair addendum writing will identify three things. Who will conduct the repair? What items will be repaired? Where will the item be repaired, i.e. location of the issue? Who will conduct the repair? Florida requires licenses for engineers, contractors, electricians, roofers, plumbers, HVAC, pool and spa contractors, etc. Make sure that the repair addendum wording lists Florida licensed and then insert the applicable trade person where necessary. Otherwise, the selling party could do the work themselves or a handyman with questionable results. This also places the liability on a state licensed third party in addition to the selling party. Example, Florida licensed electrician to repair. Okay, so the three W's, who, what, where, pretty easy. Who will conduct the repair? Um, in Florida, as we just said, um, Basically, all your trades are licensed. So you got electricians, air conditioning professionals, roofing contractors, uh, irrigation technicians. They're even uh, licensed. So you've got licensed trade people that you want to specify to handle those repairs when applicable uh, in your repair addendum. Um, the risk you run in not doing that, as we just said, is that if you don't put that in, the seller can just hire anybody. Seller can do it himself. I've seen uh, repair addendums where people have said, uh, you know, uh, repair roof that's at the end of its lifespan. The homeowner did it and the results were disastrous. It's not what you want. You want to always identify who's going to do that repair. Um, the other benefit of that is it's going to put the liability for that repair on a licensed tradesperson. And somebody that has a business, somebody that's going to have business insurance, somebody that's going to have a reputation, you've got, you know, ultimate uh, back-end resources there if things aren't done the right way, whereas, you know, Harry Homeowner doing it, you don't have that ultimate thing if down the road, you know, two months in, three months in, something happens, um, there's no warranty on the work, and, you know, you're essentially your, your buyer's going to be left holding the bag for something, and that's ultimately not what you want. What items will be repaired? Specifically state 
what item will be repaired and to what degree. The degree can equal a specific count or a specific amount. Anything less can leave unintended results. Okay, so what items will be repaired? This is where you actually want to list the exact items that you want repaired. Um, electric panel, uh, oversized breaker for air condenser and panel. Whatever that repair may be, you want to specifically list exactly what it is. Um, you know, that way there's just no, you know, breakdown. This is probably the easiest one of the three um, to get um, because you're just basically saying what it is you want repaired. Um, and the other uh, two are probably the more important of the, you know, three W's in this whole, uh, you know, lesson of how to properly draft your repair addendum. Where is or are the items located? It's the simplest of the three W's to utilize. State the location of the actual items. For example, adding GFCI outlets at kitchen, garage, bathroom, and exterior outlets. So where are the items located? Um, this is just basically putting where uh, the item is. Uh, so if you've got whatever it is, ungrounded, um, electrical receptacles, reverse polarity receptacles in the kitchen, um, exposed wiring in the utility room. You're basically just listing the spots on the property where that repair is going to be found so that the individual is going to do the work on that can identify where it's at. Um, as opposed to just willy-nilly hunting, you're just putting down repair ungrounded outlet or outlets. Nobody has an idea of exactly where they're at, so at least identifying or if they're throughout, you know, put throughout, but just make sure, you know, you have a location in there of, of where they're at. That way it gives direction. You Again, your, your whole point on this with the three W's of who, what, where is to provide the totality direction of exactly what the repair is going to be, where it is, and how much it is to what degree. Putting it all together situation. Duplex Home has three uninsurable electric panels installed. The first is located on the exterior of the house, the second panel in the garage, and the third in the hallway. Real world request. Seller to replace uninsurable electric panels. Real world result. Seller replaced one panel, did not replace the other two. In a perfect world, the revision would be seller to have Florida licensed electrician replace three uninsurable electric panels located at exterior, garage, and hallway. All right, so putting it all together, these are kind of real world examples we've seen of some things that have gone awry, um, not quite right. Um, the first one here, I'm looking at my tablet behind the, uh, behind the phone here. Duplex uh, home has three uninsurable electric panels. First looking at the exterior house, second in the garage, third in the hallway. So in the real world request, the repair addendum just said seller to replace uninsurable electric panels. Well, the problem with that is the seller doesn't know what those are. You know, if you're doing a for sale by owner, maybe the selling agent doesn't understand that. The selling agent doesn't understand from your perspective, what is uninsurable? You know, what you found by going out and trying to get property insurance and them telling you, hey, this isn't right, this isn't right, this isn't right, you can't get insurance until blah, blah, blah. So they don't have an idea. So in this situation, this was the repair addendum that was wrote. And in the real world result, um, they asked us to come back out and, and look at things to see what was done. Um, and the seller replaced one panel. That was it. Like one of the three, the other two were just left there. So now you're getting close to closing and you've got two electric panels that have to be replaced. Now you've got to scramble to get the electricians back in there to do the work and, you know, it just created a, a problem. And, and realistically, the other problem you've created is that by contractual standards, you wrote a repair addendum that said, seller to replace uninsurable electric panels, but you didn't specify how many or which one. So, you know, now the gray area comes up. Have they fulfilled their contractual obligation legally by that signed repair addendum? Um, because it wasn't worded 
in the manner that created, you know, any wiggle room uh, for them to have to, to fix it. Now the question is, is your buyer ultimately going to be the one, you know, paying to replace those panels before closing, or are they going to have to walk from the deal and give up their earnest escrow money? Gray area, not anything difficult to really avoid, just put a number in there um, and the locations of where they were found and done. You, you, have, you know, in, in the best world uh, revision redo, we would say seller to have a Florida licensed electrician. So we're saying who, Florida licensed electrician, replace three uninsurable electric panels located at the exterior garage and the hallway. So we give them a number and we give them the location. We're saying who's to do it. No problem. Situation. Buyer has small dogs, and the existing fence has multiple rotten boards all along three sides of the rear yard. Real world request, seller to replace rotten fence boards. Real world result, seller replaced exactly three fence boards, leaving well over 20 in place that were not repaired. Real world revision, seller to have contractor replace all rotten fence boards along entire rear yard perimeter wood fence. Uh, so in this one, um, uh, buyer was really particular, uh, was a doctor coming in from out of state, um, obviously paying top dollar for the house, had an idea of how they wanted their backyard to look. This one had, uh, they had small dogs. They didn't want the dogs being able to dig a little bit or to be able to get out through the fence when they were out in the yard. So um, here, the real world request was for the seller to replace rotten fence boards. Well, okay. In the real world result, the seller replaced whew, maybe three of these rotten fence boards. Uh, there was probably 15 or 20 of them left in place around the backyard perimeter where there was gaps and holes in the bottom of the fence. Um, and, um, you know, they just weren't happy. Um, the ultimate result was the buyer's agent ended up ponying up money uh, to do the rest of the repairs. But the issue was, was from a contractual obligation, the seller and the selling party did their due diligence per the language on that repair addendum because the request just said to replace rod and fence boards. So that boards being plural, that could be two and they're done and, and they've filled their obligation under that repair addendum. If you're not specifying an amount, if you're not specifying where, if you're not, you know, then all bets are off as to what they're gonna ultimately do. And that's what happened in this case. Um, and the client was really upset, um, you know, when they came to move down, they weren't able to do a walkthrough at the end. So um, just ended up not being a good situation that could have been remedied really quick by just taking a little bit of extra time um, when writing that repair addendum um, so that it, you know, that just, wouldn't have occurred if the repair addendum was strongly worded in the buyer's favor. Finale. When in doubt, ask for assistance, be it from your broker or peers. Make sure the client reads the repair addendum to ensure that their ideas of what they want repaired are clearly and specifically communicated to the seller and that they are happy that the way it was drafted so that it will get the outcome and the results they desire. As it is typically you who is drafting the repair addendum, you potentially will be the one looked at if things do not go as envisioned. Remember, a satisfied client is always a referring client. So when in doubt, ask for assistance, be it from your broker, peers, uh, even your building inspector. I, I've drafted or helped, I shouldn't say drafted, I didn't draft, I helped draft um, repair addendums for agents that were questioning how do we you get this worded the right way so that we get the intended result that we want. It was, you know, a minute and a half, two minute phone call, um, you know, to just go through some ideas, share some ideas and to get them formulated so you don't have any problems with it. Um, make sure your client fully reads the repair addendum and, and understand, you know, that the things that they want repaired are clearly and specifically communicated because they're ultimately one signing off on it but the unfortunate part about it is, is that you're the one that's typically drafting it. So even though they're signing it, they're not the ones that are, you know, putting pen to paper, you know, getting everything put down. So if something doesn't go right on that back end, 
then ultimately you're going to be the one looked at for, hey, why didn't this get done the right way? We're really upset. We're really disappointed. And then you have an unsatisfied client that had an unsatisfactory experience with you. So are you going to get that five-star review? Are you going to get, you know, the referrals from friends, coworkers, whoever, uh, maybe, maybe not. But, you know, with something as so easy as this, it, it does fly under the radar and it kind of gets um it kind of gets put by the wayside but i've seen you know we had one the other day where there was phew, like a dozen or more um screened enclosure pull screens that were damaged pretty poorly um and the repair addendum got worded to seller to replace damaged uh pool screen just not plural just damaged pool screen well Guess what the seller, you know, did? They went in, they replaced literally one screen when we went back out to do the reinspection the client paid for. Um, you know, I'm taking pictures of all these damaged, torn screens that are still around because, and, you know, in my reinspection, it basically said, you know, client fulfilled their end of the repair addendum because it said to replace damaged screen. There was no plural, there was no location. Um, yeah, I don't know who ended up doing the work, but you know, contractually that, that's just one thing that happened. So, um, really easy to do. Um, and if you have any questions, um, let us know. We have this in a, uh, PowerPoint presentation. We come and do these, uh, as lunch and learns breakfast and learns, uh, to brokerages. So if you watch this and you feel like this may be a benefit to other agents, share it number one you can share this link it's it's out there and two if you want to you know have us in to do this live and in person to where we can also answer questions and give feedback and things like that um we'd be more than happy to so give us a call thanks